think we're going to hook up uh, with uh, the very handsome Al Jackson. Oh, cool. Al, look at the look at the look at the guns. This man's Baseball. been lifting some oh, weights. Wow. Baseball season. Hey, Al, how are you, sir? I'm I'm good. I was I was gonna ask. I wanted to get just your opinion and everybody's opinion on the uh, moving cities and then maintaining your fandom for obviously from Cleveland, all four sports. But I I I live in Colorado now, so am I a sellout for wearing a Colorado? Rocky's T-shirt. Well, let me uh, let me think about that. <laughs> yes. No, he's embracing the community. No, nope, he's a Guardians fan. That's all. How did you buy it? It's it's like you know. First of all, my girlfriend is a is a diehard Rockies fan. She works for the team, so it's like it, her passion is like I, I feel like I have to de facto be a Rockies fan. And since there it's the American League and the National League, I feel like they're separate entities. It's like. When you have, if you if somebody's cheating on you, yes, is it is it terrible? But, but if you find out the person's in Europe, is it as bad? That's how I look at it. <laughs> Al, it's in t totally acceptable to have a uh, team in both leagues. Totally okay. acceptable. Now, Unless one of those teams is the Josh? <laughs> uh, What's that? I said, is that code for something? Yes. <laughs> Look, you but can play. On I am blues, bisexual. All right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Willie was also making a point there, which was it's okay to have uh, both teams accept. If you're a Yankees fan and a team in the other division is doing very well that season, you're hopping on the bandwagon, get out of here. I don't want that. But right. I think that if you move to a city, you can embrace the culture of that city. And you're respecting your girlfriend. It's not like they're rival teams, so and, that's and, okay. And I think also Ace raised a good point that that's I think got stepped point. on. That is, did you buy the shirt or did she give it to you? Oh, you know, Ace, that's a weird story. I'm <laughs> such an old lady already. I had some stuff in a vacuum bag and I unsealed it and the shirt was in there. I think it was at a game i went to in like 2017 well, so it's kismet. like brand new but it's wow. five years old yeah well there we go yeah, the i well, thank you kind of anti-yankee anyway and i think a lot of yeah. Yan yankees fans aren't yankees fans they just wear them because their favorite rap star wears them yeah they they really don't know they wouldn't know a new york yankee if one hit him in the face with a baseball now, bat. do you think the yankees got popular because of hip-hop <laughs> I think Jay Z helped. I think a certain, so. A certain generation. I wear think. The hats. I think so. Al. I think there. I think a lot of people will wear certain things because people that they had, they admire, f for reasons. Whatever. Well, yeah, it, you know, there was that happened with the Bulls when they were big, and it happened with the Cowboys. Where like, but the Cowboys, I will say, they have fans everywhere, and Cowboys fans are crazy. Like they have tattoos, and like Cowboys fans are really deep with it, but. You know there are there were those teams that were like the it teams for a little while, but you don't hear as much as many like oh I, I'm a diehard Bulls fan now that Michael's not around anymore. <laughs> it's uh it, it's yeah. it's weird. You know I have a I, Washington I, I've been uh, fans I, of the Cavs when they just were clearly tanking to get LeBron mm -hmm. to the point where Sports Illustrated wrote an article saying that they were tanking to win. I mean, to to win LeBron, basically, and they were. I was going to those games. They were. <laughs> you, you know I have a Washington uh, tattoo. A couple, actually. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Where are they? Yeah. May I uh, ask? On, on the guns. Uh, above my yeah. ass. Uh, and I got uh, a picture of Dan Snyder above my ass crack. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice package. It's a... Uh, no, Chick's been a loyal Washington football club fan since day one, since I've known you. Yeah, it's been a long time. I like... Uh, who's so, uh, oh, I know. They used uh, to win Super Bowls, Al. They used to, uh, buddy. Al, you, you, know, Chick, you know the Chick, great... has the commanders grown on you? No. Do you uh, like that name now? Not until he... Um, not until he sells the team. Then I'll be back a little bit. I'm yeah. more of an NFL mm -hmm. fan right now. Um, uh, Roy Wood Jr., good friend of the show, comedian, currently doing some guest hosting work on The Daily Show. He is a diehard Miami Dolphins fan. Yes. And and what I like about Roy, he's going to stick to that even if he lives in New York. It's, he's not going to change. That's true fandom. But I guess we've established you're okay as long as you've got a, a, a National League team and an American League team. Is that right, Josh? Okay. Well, Thank sure. you for that. I, I really was feeling weird because you know your whole childhood is wrapped up in your in your teams. Like I remember going to to Indians games with my uncle Ben. You know, going to Browns games. That I was having a conversation with a friend of mine the other day. Can you imagine how many before Uber? How many drunk people were leaving a Browns Steelers game in like '86? Can you imagine? Like, how did we all get home? It's a miracle. <laughs> Yeah, I I was there for many of them, and I <laughs> yeah. know what you mean. It was of course, the, the the Cleveland then Indians, famous for nickel beer night. 
You, yes, you, great you, idea. You read about that. It did not go yeah. well. Al, <laughs> Al, Al Jackson is our guest. He can be seen on DBL, the Daily Blast Live, where he dresses up nice and pretty. And I uh, promise. How many eyeglasses uh, do you have, Al? I have a weird collection. I think we all got a little weird during COVID once we were back in our caves for a couple of years. And I was talking to Dean before we went on the air. I bought a lot of electronics and a lot of sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have anything to contribute? Because I already feel weird. Mm -hmm. uh, I, started, oh, I don't feel weird. I started Same. feeding a lot of critters outside. A lot of squirrels. <laughs> really? started naming them. It, it got weird. So, yeah. I wish I bought That's sunglasses. That's what happened in Shawshank. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Al is uh, here uh, every week to help me. Uh, increase my uh, street hipness, if you will, and uh, that is uh, usually involves the English language and uh, certain uh, terms that may be considered to be uh, jargon or street or um, slang. What have we got this week, Al? <laughs> and sometimes, Tom, they're just pop culture words that somebody might say to you, and I don't want you to stand there stunned. I want you to be able to respond quickly and just show that, like, hey, you're part of modern society and you know what's going on in these streets. So, Tom, if somebody, no, I'm not even going to say, Tom, why don't you just tell the audience when you would use the word or phrase nonfiction in a conversation? Well, I would say uh, I uh, read a lot. I tend to read nonfiction, um, biographies, that sort of thing. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, I read an occasional novel. I just finished one, as a matter of fact. But um, uh, how did I do? That's an answer that you would give laying down giving like a, an interview to Playboy. Like that was, <laughs> that was a very chill response. But nonfiction would just be like uh, if somebody's telling the truth that in if if Willie was like, look, dad, you know I'm the hottest young comic coming up in the game right now. You'd be like, nonfiction, baby. Like, oh, it's like saying you ain't lying, my man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yes, if you have a time machine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Tom, now use the phrase. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I certainly, <laughs> I certainly enjoy watching the Daily Blast live. In fact, just the other day, it was on the, a screen in a uh, a place where I was uh, having some work done, and I uh, pointed to the mechanic and I said, "Oh, that's my friend Al, nonfiction." Jeez. I like it. You, it. It was a long way to go, but it paid <laughs> off at the end. Yeah. I, I pre, that was dead on. Yeah. Tom, let's keep this momentum going. Uh, what does the phrase trick bag mean? Trick oh, bag. That, of course, uh, that appears in one of my favorite songs. Of course, I'm talking about the great song, What is Hip, from the Oakland-based band. Anyone want to help, help me here? Uh, no? I have no idea. Seriously? No one knows the... the uh, I've the, heard it, yes. What is hip? Tell yes. me, tell me if you think you know. Yes. What is hip today may become passe. Hmm. No one? So trick bag is in there? I yeah. just said I've heard about it. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> they use the phrase trick bag. Okay. And then what does it mean? I've always wondered what that meant. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> I had a I had a hunch that's what he was doing. Uh, uh, the pregnant pause. Um, here's a little taste of the song for you. I just happen to have it here, Al. Hang on here. You want a hip trip? Maybe hip than hip. Hipper than hip. It's the Tower of Power, Al. Uh, they, the Tower of Power horns, famous, uh, but once again... So Oakland Very Hard to Go, far more popular song than... Uh, and What is Hip is one of my favorite songs, Al. And they say you're in a hip trip, even hipper than hip. But they do say, um, they use the phrase trick bag. So oh. I assume it's a bag of tricks. Uh, so it's, oh, oh, it's a bag of tricks. <laughs> so okay. it would be... You are really well, illuminating this. So, uh, that, so uh, let's just say Josh is going going out right in the one. town, and he says, I'm going to use my trick bag this evening, meaning he has a number of approaches he can do with these young ladies to, to meet them. It's part of oh, his. I mean, I could see that. Not, not in th that's not what it means in this case. But I, I could definitely see that. Willie, have you ever heard the phrase trick bag? It's not like a younger... Dude, not at all. I have no idea what this one means. Uh, what is hip? It starts out with, so you want to dump out yo, yo, trick bag. That's what it says. Ease on in a hip thang with an A, but you ain't exactly sure what is hip. It's a great song. So you started to let your hair grow, spent big bucks on your wardrobe. Oh, wardrobe, I near rhyme there. Nice. <laughs> Somehow you know there's much more to the trip. 
What is hip? Tell me, tell me. Huh. It, it's about how hipness changes. And uh, what no. is hip today what might become passe. I, so a trick bag is what, Al? I'm confused. It's kind of like a, it, it's, it's when an enemy of yours is trying to get you in trouble. Mm. So it's like if you had an ex-girlfriend that's, uh, you know, sending your new girlfriend, uh, you know, uh, hey, girl, we need to talk uh, uh, about Willie because I've got some things to tell you. You would just tell your new girl, like, look, do not respond to those messages. Look, she's trying to put me in her trick bag. We're not going to go down like gotcha. that. Just like, oh, that's that's a really interesting version. That's vastly different. Yeah, so it's different just like a hater one. trying to get you in trouble by leading you down a bad path. Gotcha. So you yeah. got to get out of, your, out of somebody's trick bag. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. Tom, what does it mean to be in your bag? You know this one. Um, To be in you your bag. Uh, wait a minute, I can get That's this. That's not my bag, baby. There you go. Oh, is it that what it means? Like, your bag is the thing that you do? Like, yeah. That's, like, someone says, hey, man, that's, uh, we're going to go to, uh, uh, Josh is going to a hockey game. You're going with him. Nah, hockey's not my bag. Is that you how it works? You could definitely use it like that. You, that was actually pretty good. It, it can also mean, like, uh, that, that definition was fine. It can also mean, like, you're just minding your own business you don't know what it, 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 they're like. Hey, you know, uh, uh, Josh and Willie are getting called down to HR today, and you could just say, "Look, I ain't got. I'm in my bag. I don't. I, I don't know what happened this weekend." So it's just like I'm doing my thing. So whatever is happening over there has nothing to do with me. But <laughs> yeah. the way you use it is right. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, we're talking with comedian Al Jackson, and Al is wearing his Colorado Rockies T-shirt. Al is now a feel resident a little of, weird about it. Resident of Denver. Don't you're blame you. Good man. You're and, good. And, and has the new girlfriend? Uh, is she now uh, occupying your uh, abode, if you will? They, but she has her own house, so she's over a lot. But like, she has her own crib. She's lived here since two thousand eight. She's, uh, you know, she's had the same, she's just a stable. It's so beautifully chill to be with a stable person. I was like, what? It, I, no one told me how great it is to be with an adult. Like, oh, that, sounded, <laughs> that sounded really creepy, but just a fully functional adult. No, we, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're just like, things are done, Josh. And you're like, oh, you don't, you're not weird about this. It's just like, oh, it's just easy. I yes. love it. Yeah, uh, and I noticed you used the term "crib," so that is still um, that's still a thing. Sure. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. It, uh, I, I think "crib" will always be somewhere. "Crib" is like in the area of cool, like where it's just like always going to be somewhere in your lingo mindset. Yeah, I don't think I can get away with using it. Well, it's because you're not in your new crib time. yet. Uh, when I move to my new crib. If you don't say it like that, if you go, when I move to my new crib, yeah. everything will be better. Mm -hmm. Say that. They'll be mocking me. <laughs> Who's they, by the way? <laughs> all everyone uh, out there, because I'm paranoid. <laughs> That's not what I'm mocking you for. <laughs> He's paranoid of every, all the strangers and some of his family. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> well, Al, it's and always we a great pleasure. talk about the amazing tracksuit in the studio today? I know this is radio, but there is an Adidas tracksuit that is super dope. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm thanks, loving that. Classic, I my orange one. Man, Al. You got an orange one? Oh, yes, bro. I'd like to see that. You've got style. You need to style me. I need to take tips oh, from you. Well, th thank you. I feel like tracksuits for all time, if you get down with it, but it has to be you. It has to be one for all time. Are you down with the matching tracksuit day? All of us. Uh, I don't own one, of course. I, uh, as you know, I'm, I don't approve of sweatpants. He he ha he owns no sweatpants, and he doesn't like sweatpants, and looks down on people. And that's, I was going to say, looks down on people who wear sweatpants. <laughs> right, he, right. he looks down on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not comfortable in them, Al. To be honest with you. What about track pants? Um, Same I thing. Don't overly own any. They make some nice, like jogger pants for men. That are wonderful material, not sweat material. Tom I guess, loves but... mom jeans. Period. That's what he wears. The higher the butt, the better. Hemmed. I'm yep. wearing a nice pair of jeans right now. <laughs> oh, mom jeans. The blue kind. Uh, oh. There's not a one. There's not one square inch of that fabric that touches his body. That's the way he likes to wear his jeans. <laughs> but he hates sweatpants. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they're nice denim, very comfortable. Al, uh, are you going to be doing any road work anytime soon? You're doing some stand up. Yeah, I, I got some stand-up coming, but it's coming to later towards the fall. Right now, I'm finishing my second book, which is crazy. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, people can listen to me on my podcast, My Safe Word is More, or catch me on DBL. Uh, but yeah, I'll be ready. I'm gonna, I have a pretty big tour starting in the fall, so I'm just 
writing new material. My new album will be out in two weeks, so I'll be pushing that. But in the meantime, just my podcast and all that good stuff. Hey, real quick, Al, uh, was your dad a beer drinker? Not at all. My dad never drank a day in his life. Uh, did, like, you, in front of me, no. When you were a kid, we got well, we were talking about that. We got this great letter about these guys that do a retro beer tailgating thing at Packer games. Do you remember the beer commercials when you were a kid? Absolutely, Watch. every single one. Yeah, because we were trying to remember the uh, Schlitz slogan yesterday. We finally came up with it. When you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer. Do you remember? Oh, um, yeah. Do you remember the one the one beer to have when you're having more than one? Was it? I'll it, give you. No, it wasn't. Starts cold. with an S. I, I, I'll tell you what it was. It was Wait, Schaefer. give me the letter. Schaefer is oh, the one beer to that. have. Was that a, like a Chicago, like Midwestern brewery? Yeah, I, I don't know. It must have been. I, but I, we just when you hear these old beer names like Blatz. Just they uh, weren't catchy. Schlitz, <laughs> Pabst. Yeah, they. It was. A, it was a generation. Now it's just like you know. Dragon fruit kiwi pale ale. Yeah, they're weird now. I miss the old school. I talk about it on stage. Like, I'm glad I didn't. I, I'm glad I retired before the fizzy drinks. I think they're embarrassing. If you're gonna go hard, let's go. Let's go out. Let's go get some. Let's go get some scotch and finish the night. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything that's got a dragonfly on it. I think it's super embarrassing. But do what you do. Thanks, Al. Al Jackson. Watch him on the Daily Blast live on a TV or a computer near you.